Hi guys, so I am presenting uh, the pectoralis medial and minor and subclavius in this video, okay? So I'm going to write it, go ahead and um, read uh, the notes here, but please, uh, bless you, but please look at the image here as I do read this, okay? We have the anterior view identifying the three segments of pectoralis. Pectoralis major. Keep in mind, this uh, upper fibers and lower fibers very similar to um, uh, the up, uh, the trapezius. They are antagonies, right? Just like the deltoid, anterior and, and posterior deltoid. Similarly, these two are antagonists to each other. And we have the clavicular, clavicular, external. This is one word that I have to um, pronounce it very slow. Clavicular external and costal okay so i'm going to go ahead and read the pectoralis major is a broad powerful muscle located on the chest except for the part beneath breast tissue it's convergent a convergent meaning is it joined it collided it's more so it come together superficial fibers are accessible so pectoralis major is divided into three segments that's what i have mentioned earlier the upper and lower fiber fibers perform opposing actions at the shoulder joint, just like I said earlier. Flexion and extension, respectively, making this muscle an antagonist to itself. Okay, so the action of um, the pectoralis major, all the fibers is adduct the shoulder ADD, adduct the shoulder, it medially rotate the shoulder it also assists to elevate the thorax during force inhalation with the arm fixed for the upper fibers it flex the shoulder it horizontally ad add or adduct the shoulder for the lower fibers it extend the shoulder and we know that the um the origin is at the medial half of the clavicle so we um this is really um I always remember this because pectoralis major is um, a very um, a muscle landmark, I would say. Right, so the um, medial half, so medial meaning towards the body midline, right? Lateral, medial. So if they say lateral, you're gonna count from here. Okay, keep that in mind. So medial half of clavicle, the sternum, and cartilage of first through six ribs. Okay, so the insertion is the uh, crest of the greater uh, tribacle of the humerus. Okay, keep in mind that you have to be on the crest and um, aligned to, with the greater tribacle of the humerus. So the nerve uh, innervation of the upper fibers is the lateral pectoral C5, C6, and C7. Lower fibers is the lateral and medial pectoral C6, C7, C8 and T1. Okay, I'm going to read this area here. So the difference between the white and dark meat of a cooked bird is due to its difference intramuscular connective tissues. Dark and white meat are present in all mammals, but are more distinct in birds. The reason is that light-colored musculature is rich in muscle fibers and poor in sarcoplasm. The tissue that surrounds the muscle fiber, while dark meat has the exact opposite composition. If you are fond of the breast, chew on this fact, a bird's pectoralis major make up 20 to 35 percent of its body weight. Um, if you were to watch a video that I did um, a months back, I believe, is with regards to, um, you know, how the low twitch and, um, and fast twitch, right? We all know that the reason why legs or, or the arms are, are actually um, dark meat is because there's more movement, right? So it's, um, it's really full of blood. There's nutrients. There's a lot of um, movement going on there. That's why it's reaching, right? Uh, that's why it's kind of uh, called dark meat, right? because of that blood circulation going on. Whereas the white meat, if you prefer white meat, there's not much because it was, the, the breast is not really moving on. It's more so in a very, um, in terms of mobility, right? So I did that video, I can't remember which um, system that I, I presented and I mentioned that. I probably mentioned in a couple of video. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead in the next page, uh, page 90, of the trail guide to uh, the body. Okay, so I'm going to be reading this area here. The, um, the, um, the partner is sidelined. And whereas here, uh, the partner is in supine. To be honest, in real life, um, that has to be covered. Um, nothing is seen, um, but for the purpose of being professional, we're all professional here. They're showing um, the nipples or um, the breasts, the whole breast area in this book. Okay, This is the best anatomy book because it, it will uh, give you a map. So when exploring the pectoralis major and minor, it is advisable to palpate around the breast tissue and not directly into it. So this raises the question when palpating on a female, how do you access these and other chest muscles without contacting breast tissue? So, so the most important aspect when palpating your breast tissue is communicating your intentions to your partner. That is very important. Also encourage her to let you know if at any time she wishes to stop, right? We have that consent and any time they wish to stop, they have that, right? They, they can modify the treatment. They can um, stop it, pause, whatever they want to do is according to them, okay? That's their right. So assuming your partner is draped under a sheet or wearing a, a sports bra, the key to safe and comfortable palpation around breast tissue is positioning your client so the breast tissue will naturally shift away from where you are accessing or trying to access. So for instance, in a supine position above, like here, right? The breast will shift laterally, allowing easier access to the external and upper pectoral, pectoral regions. Okay? So in this position, however, Larger breasts may crowd the axillary region. In such situation, you could either ask your partner to shift and hold her breast medially, allowing you to access the axilla, or use the back of your hand to push that tissue medially. You see what the client, the therapist is doing here, pushing the tissue medially. Okay, so we're not touching it with the fingers, we're pushing it with um, this, uh, the dorsal side, right? We're pushing it. This is not allowed. So we're always, okay, in a sideline position on the left. Okay, the breast will fall medially. This is really easy. Just like uh, if you wanted to have um, an ellipsoas uh, release, sideline, uh, right? Um, this will really, like, keep all the organs. In this case, it's the breast tissue. It will automatically fall. Then you don't have to tell your partner to please uh, move your um, move yourself or move your um, breast tissue. Um, to, you know, for you to have access to the axilla or to the groin area, right? So use the back of your own hand to push the tissue immediately in a sideline position, right? It's really really uh, important that you further um, push that. Um, region passively, shifting the shoulder anteriorly, right? So because if you pull it like anteriorly, it will have that gravity and it will um, tend to fall um, the all the breast tissue um, onto the other breast, right? And then you'll have more access if you were to um, envision it in your own uh, head, okay? So um, uh, on this uh, image here, uh, partner in supine, right? The pectoralis major and the deltoid, right? So see how the client, right, is immediately rotating um, the, uh, the shoulder against um, the partner's resistance, right? So um, with your partner's shoulder, slightly ABD, abducts, abduct, right? Sit or stand facing him. So locate the medial shaft of the clavicle and move inferiorly onto the clavicular fibers. Explore the surface of the pectoralis the pectoralis major, follow the fibers laterally as they bend with the deltoid and attach at the greater tubercle. So grasp the belly of the pectoralis by sinking your thumb into the axilla. As you can see what the therapist is doing, you're going to ask your partner to medially rotate his shoulder against your resistance. Press your hand toward your belly. Note that the contraction 
of the pectoralis, okay? Do the clavicular uh, fiber runs parallel with the anterior deltoid? You ask all these questions to yourself. As you grasp the belly, do you sense its thickness and how it lies across the rib cage? Okay, so for a side lying here, um, you know, partner side lying, so the therapist is trying to grasp on that, the pectoral, so supporting your partner's arm, flex the shoulder and pull it anteriorly toward you. So this position not only brings the pectoralis major off the chest wall, but also allows the breast tissue to fall away from the area you are palpating. Right? I'm just making sure that you can see it. Okay, so grasping the uh, pectoralis major, explore its mass from the ribs to the humerus, passively flex and extend the shoulder, perceiving the changes in the tension of the tissue. Okay, so when do you usually use your pec major as doing a chin up, using almost any swim stroke ever invented, sewing a piece of wood, both directions, okay? Having you see this image here, partner in supine with arm raised, feeling the lower fibers contract. So the therapist here, right? Here's a way to get sense of the antagonistic movement of the pectoralis major, upper and lower fibers. So a, a partner in supine, begin with your partner's hand raised, right? Towards the ceiling as you create resistance, ask your partner to flex his shoulder. Okay, so they're cre he's creating a resistance here, right? Still try to bring your hand over your head so the upper fibers will contract while the lower fibers remain lax. Ask him to extend against your resistant, resistance. Now try to bring your hand towards your hips. Here the lower fiber, fibers will contract while the upper fibers relax. Okay? You see here, right? The partner supine with arm raised, feeling the lower fibers contract, and then trying to see um, this one is relaxed because they're antagonists, right? Like I said, to each other. Okay, I think I'm going to have to do a second part.